everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on my first ever video update on my life in Vietnam. And it's crazy to think that I've been here now for three and a half months and a lot has happened in that time. So I just wanted to give a video update instead of writing all about it, which would take a long time. Um, I'm gonna talk about like how I'm doing in Vietnam, different accomplishments, challenges, what it's like teaching and what it's like living in Vietnam and I will answer the viewer questions in another video just because YouTube does not like long videos so I'll keep this one short and then I'll have another one with the questions so to begin I think I want to talk about like my overall happiness in Vietnam I'm very happy living here I love it the culture the language, I've made some incredible friendships with people, and I love teaching. I love teaching English. I didn't think that I would coming into this experience, but I really love teaching English. I live in a province with about 200,000 people in my city, and it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right. There's enough to do and enough to keep me busy. I love the high school that I teach at. My students are wonderful and the, they always want to learn more and they're always excited when I come into the classroom to teach and to give them their lesson for the day. Um, the teachers and the administrators here have been super welcoming to me as their native English teacher for one year here and have just made this experience so incredible. And if I had to rate my happiness on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say I'm about an 8.5 to a 9 most days. Most days I'm just generally really happy and the little things can't bother me too much. Um, so teaching here is the main thing of what I do. And I teach about 20 to 25 hours a week. I teach the most out of any of the Fulbright English teaching assistants. And I teach three different groups of students, my English majors, non-majors, and the English gifted team. My English majors are wonderful. I have a lot of fun teaching them. They are my most favorite group to teach. And they're always so energetic. They love to learn. They're excited. And they make teaching easy, actually. They are just wonderful. I love it and they're amazing and they just love i love seeing them grow with english they have made the most progress out of any of my students from being here and i can't wait to just see them grow in the future my second group of students are my non-major students my non-major students although they are wonderful my non-major students are a challenge my non-major classes are multi-level. My English major classes are, all, are also multi-level, but they're not as multi-level as my non-major classes. My non-major classes um, have wide ranges of abilities with English. I have a lot of students. I have a lot of students who are not advanced. They're at a basic level. I have some students that are at an intermediate and then maybe one no more no more than four students who are like advanced with english so finding lessons to teach them is challenging i try to make it fun and exciting but there's a lot of games and activities that i can't do with them that i would do with the english majors because they're too advanced and are not beneficial to all the students. They would only be beneficial to like one or two. So finding activities for non-majors is kind of hard. Um, another challenge that I face when teaching non-majors is discipline. And this is only like in one or two classes, but some of my students are very disruptive and I can tell they do not want to learn English. Um, which I understand you don't want to learn, but you're also required to take this class. And I am your foreign English teacher for the year, so I feel like I deserve some respect in that way. But I'm also giving them a lot of respect 
and I'm trying to make class fun, but it's very hard when students are constantly talking or are off task the entire time. So non-majors, they can be fun, but they're my most challenging group. I'm always thinking of ideas of what to do with them. So if anybody watching this video has any idea of how I can teach the non-major students, please let me know. I would love your help. And my last group of students is the English national team. They are a group of students who are going to compete nationally with the English language throughout Vietnam. And I teach them speaking and I really love teaching them. It's a small group of eight students who I've gotten to know really well. And I love teaching them. So to sum up teaching, teaching is wonderful. Teaching has its challenges, but at the end of the day, it's so wonderful. I have amazing students who just inspire me a lot and push me to be a better teacher. So I really love teaching my students. Um, part of this video, I wanted to talk about accomplishments that I've made while living in Vietnam, but also some challenges that I face. So I'm going to start with the challenges, actually. Um, communication can be very difficult here sometimes. Um, not just communicating with students, communicating with teachers, communicating with locals. Um, people don't always know how to interact with me, and so when people won't sometimes talk to me because they don't like know how to speak to me or they don't know how to interact with me or they choose not to communicate with me in English when they can speak in English. They choose to talk about me in Vietnamese, which I really hate being talked about in Vietnamese because that's unfair because I can't understand. Even though both people can speak in English, they sometimes choose to speak about me in Vietnamese. It's annoying, but it's kind of just one of those daily things that I accept, and I don't try not to let it bother me so much. I'm always finding ways of how I can communicate with people and how to get to know them and not seem like a foreigner. I feel like a lot of people treat me differently because I am an American and I am a foreigner, but I also want people to see that like I'm a normal person. I have thoughts, I have feelings, dreams, ambitions, just like every other person in this world. I want to be treated like a normal person, and that is still a daily challenge that I face. Um, and I'd say like my last challenge is sometimes I get homesick. I mean, but who doesn't living abroad? Um, I miss my norms. I miss sometimes speaking in native English. I miss talking with my family. I miss hanging out with my close friends, doing things that I used to do. But when I deal with homesickness, you can look at it two ways. You can either let it defeat you or you can learn from it, accept what you can't change and move on. I take the second option. There's a lot of things I can't change about living in Vietnam, but I can always, 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 always change my attitude about things. So I try to take that route and look at things in a better perspective. Keep fighting. Um, and to end the video, I just want to talk about some accomplishments. I'm becoming independent day by day, more and more day by day. Unlike when I first came to Vietnam, I was not independent, but now I can do a lot of things on my own. Traveling, shopping, communicating with people, because I'm learning the language little by little, day by day, I learn it. And I think the last best thing, there are so many amazing things I could talk about, like learning the language, being content with very little, um, sending positive vibes about America. I'm a lot of people's first American that they've ever met. But I think the best part is the relationships that I've formed with people. Um, I'm really close with a group of young English teachers and I've formed some very close relationships with some of my students. And I just really hope those relationships continue to grow and expand and they get to know me more as a person, not just as an American, not just as a foreigner, not just as their native English language teacher, but just as a person, like a friend, 
um, continuing to show people that we're more similar than we are different. And I just really hope for those relationships to, co to continue and expand. So that's my life update and I'll have it in another video where I answer the questions. So thank you so much for listening to my life update and have a good day.